Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can open a form for your view for your model driven app using environment variables in Cloudflows. In 2020, I published a WTF episode that shared how to create a dynamic record URL for a model driven app. The flaw with the method I shared is that it's not reusable because it was using the get rows dataverse action every time you needed to reference a dynamic record URL for a model driven app in your cloud flow. What can be used instead is environment variables, which is a power platform feature that can be referenced in power apps and power automate cloud flows. For reusable URL inputs, this is where environment variables can be used rather than hard coding your URLs. They can also be moved from the source Dataverse environment to other Dataverse environments through solutions. If the value is different in another Dataverse environment, simply change it in one place in the environment variable. This is why it's great to use when you need to dynamically create a URL for Dataverse or Dynamics 365 in your cloud flows. Let's break down what a model-driven app URL looks like for forms. Number one, the organization URI, which is a Dataverse or Dynamics 365 environment organization URL. Number two, to load a model-driven app, use the query parameter of app ID or app name. The app ID is the ID of the app and the app name is a unique name of the app. This is defined when the model-driven app is created and you can find it in the settings of the app. You can use either as a query parameters. However, when using the app ID, since the ID is unique to the Dataverse or Dynamics 365 environment, this would need to be updated with a target environment app ID when deploying your solution into another environment. For this reason, I'll stick with the app name as a query parameter and I'll use a unique name value in my URL. Number three, the value of the app ID or app name parameter. The easiest way to retrieve these values is to query the Dataverse web API by using the following request. You can perform this request directly in your browser and the values for the app ID and app name parameters will display in the response. Please note that based on your signed in user account, you will only see apps that you have access to as defined by your security role in Dataverse. For this WTF episode, I'll use a unique name value for the app name query parameter in my URL. Number four, the query parameter of page type to load. If you're opening a form, the value will be entity record. Number five, the query parameter of ETN, which is the logical name of the table. You can find this by browsing to make.parapps.com, view the table in your solution, navigate to tools under table properties, and select copy logical name. The copied value can then be pasted into a current value of an environment variable. Number six, if you're opening a form, the query parameter of ID is required. This is the good of the row in Dataverse. Now one optional parameter is to provide the form ID of the form in the scenario where you have more than one form for the table. For this WTF episode, there's only one main form for the table, so I won't be providing this parameter value. Otherwise, if you're opening a view, the difference is that for number four, the page type query parameter value will be entity list. For number six, there's a query parameter of view ID, which will be the ID of the view. You can find this by navigating to the view in the model driven app, and copy the view ID value in the URL. And lastly, number seven, the view type query parameter defines the type of view to open. The parameter value can either be 109 for a system view or 4230 for a personal view. Now that we know the different components of the model driven app URL, I'll next cover the following. Let's start with number one. Create environment variables in a solution. In a solution, create four new environment variables where the data type is text. The first environment variable is for the organization URI. To create environment variable in your solution, click new and select more, and then select environment variable. Enter a name for the environment variable followed by a description. In the data type dropdown field, select text. Next, add a current value, which will be the Dataverse or Dynamics 365 environment URL. Then click save. The environment variable is now created. The second environment variable is for the app name parameter value, 
with a current value of the app name for the model driven app. Remember, this is the unique name value of the app from the API request I showed you earlier. The third environment variable is the ETN parameter value with a current value of the logical name of the table. This will be the copied value from the table properties as seen earlier in this episode. The fourth environment variable is for the view ID parameter value with the current value of the ID of the view. Now that the environment variables have been created, let's go ahead with number two and three, which is building the URLs in a Cloudflow to open a form or view. The use case is when a new challenge is created in Dataverse, post a notification in the Model Driven app, and post a message to a channel of Microsoft Teams that allows the users to view the newly created challenge record or the active challenges system view in the model driven app. In my Cloudflow, I have the add a new row dataverse action for the notifications table to create the in-app notifications. I'm referencing the environment variables and the URLs for the actions. The other action is a post a message to a channel in Microsoft Teams, which has two hyperlinks view challenge and view active challenges. Let me show you how to build the URLs using the environment variables. I'll click on the edit HTML button. In my hyperlinks, I have placeholder values. For the view challenge hyperlink, I'll replace the placeholder value and build the URL. I'll first select the Dataverse environment URL environment variable, followed by the innovation challenge app environment variable, for the app name query parameter. Next, I'll select the challenges logical name environment variable for the ETN query parameter. And finally, I'll select challenge as dynamic content from the trigger for the value of the ID parameter. This will be the good of the challenge row created. I'll do the same for the view active challenges hyperlink. I'll first select the Dataverse environment URL environment variable followed by the innovation challenge app environment variable for the app name query parameter. Next, I'll select the challenges logical name environment variable for the ETN query parameter. Then I'll select the active challenges system view environment variable for the view ID query parameter. Lastly, I'll enter 1039 for the view type query parameter value, which is for system views. Save the cloud flow and is ready to be triggered. Okay, now it's time for the demo. I'm in my challenges app and here I have a new challenge, which I'm about to create. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the save button. This will now trigger my cloud flow. So I'll navigate to my cloud flow, refresh the run history and we can see that it has succeeded. I'll head back to my innovation challenge app and I'll wait for the in-app notification to appear in my model driven app. As you can see, it has now appeared and we can see the two hyperlinks that were created using the environment variables and my cloud flow. So now when I click on view challenge, this should now load the newly created challenge that I created earlier. And then if we click on the second hyperlink, this should now direct me to the active view challenges. Sorry, this should direct me to the active challenges system view in my model driven app. So let's go and check out that message in Microsoft Teams. So here I am in Microsoft Teams and I can see that my message has been posted to the channel and we can see the two hyperlinks that I showed you how to build earlier. Now, if I click on the view challenge hyperlink, this will open up the form in my model driven app and load that newly created challenge row. Ta -da! And now if we click on the second hyperlink, this should take me to the active challenges systems view in my model driven app. And there you go. So what I'm going to show you in the next WTF episode is how to make your notifications look better in Microsoft Teams. And that's going to be using the Power Apps Cards feature. So stay tuned and keep an eye out on that next WTF episode. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. <laughs>
Don't forget to, let me try that again. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.